In this video, I will present a different way to understand integrals as limits. I assume you have already watched the video where I originally defined integral. It is linked in the description. Like in the previous videos, I will be working with a bounded function f defined on a closed interval a, b. This picture, which I have used before, summarizes what we know about lower and upper sums and about lower and upper integrals. All the lower sums are less than or equal to all the upper sums. We define the upper integral as the infimum of all the upper sums, and we define the lower integral as the supremum of all the lower sums. In addition, we know that final partitions produce better lower and upper sums. Final partitions produce larger lower sums, which are closer to the lower integral, and final partitions also produce smaller upper sums, which are closer to the upper integral. So far, this is what we knew. The question motivating this video is, can we instead compute the lower or upper integral of a function as a limit of lower or upper sums? It looks like we should be able to do this, but it is not clear how. A limit as what approaches what? A limit as the partitions become finer? What does that mean exactly? We may naively think that we want to take the limit as the number of points in the partition approaches infinity and hence the number of rectangles in the upper or lower sum approaches infinity. But it is not that simple. We also need the width of every rectangle to approach zero, otherwise we may end up with something like this picture. This suggests the following definition. Given a partition P with points x0 through xn, I am calling delta xi the width of the ith subinterval. For example, here is a partition with five points, four subintervals, with widths delta x1, delta x2, delta x3, and delta x4. Then I define the norm of the partition P as the largest of the lengths of the subintervals, and I will represent the norm of P as P between double vertical bars. The norm is basically a measure of how good a partition is. If the norm is small, then all the subintervals have small length, and hence all the rectangles are very thin. The limit I wanted to take is the limit as the norm of the partition approaches zero. More specifically, the definition we chose for the lower integral is the supremum of all the lower sums, when I use all partitions of the interval a, b. This is what we knew. But now we have a new theorem. The lower integral can also be calculated as the limit of the lower sums as the norm of the partition approaches zero. What does this mean? I can think of the lower sums as a function whose domain is the set of all partitions rather than the domain being a set of numbers. And I can give a formal definition for this limit, similar to how we defined the limit of a function with domain a set of numbers. This means that for every positive number epsilon, there exists a positive number delta such that for every partition P of the interval AB, if the norm of P is less than delta, then the distance between the lower integral, which is a number, and the p lower sum of f, which is also a number, is less than epsilon. There, that's a rigorous statement. And that is a valid way to compute the lower integral as a limit instead of as a supremum. However, in practice, this does not make the computation any simpler. And we still need to consider all partitions. There is a trick, and it comes from a second theorem. Instead of using all partitions, we can pick a specific sequence of partitions, call them p1, p2, p3, and so on, as long as the norm of pn approaches zero as n approaches infinity. For example, we could choose the partition pn to be the one that breaks the interval a, b into n subintervals of equal length. This is just an example, probably the simplest, we could also choose other sequences of partitions. This second theorem says that, for any such choice of partitions, we can compute the lower integral of f as the limit as n approaches infinity of the pn lower sum of f. And similarly, the upper integral can be computed as a limit of upper sums. This is a simpler expression, and it is a limit in the sense we are used to a limit as a certain number approaches infinity. I will omit the proof of these two theorems. 
In practice, to study the theory of integration, the original definition is both simpler and more useful than this new interpretation. The original definition makes it easier to prove further properties and theorems. But it is good to know that there is a way to redefine lower and upper interclasses limits. There is an alternative way to compute interclasses limits, using so-called Riemann sums. That will be the topic of the next video.